Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And Joy and Gal. And today we have landed right here in Marbleton, New York. Now, we're going to go to something that we've never been to before. It's a little museum up here, and I'm excited. It's where actually a spot called the Den of Marbleton, and what they specialize in is they have a teddy bear museum. Mm -hmm. And me and Joy have a problem with, uh, I call them stuffed animals, plushies, whatever you want to call them. They overtake our bed, our guest beds, some other beds, couches. Chairs. Chairs. We got a few stuffed animals, let's put it that way. So when we heard there was actually a museum about teddy bears here in New York, we had to come check it out. We had to come bring you. And uh, I figured before we go inside, let's talk about the history of a teddy bear. Okay. Now, the name teddy bear is named after President Teddy Roosevelt. You see, Teddy Roosevelt was around Onward, Mississippi on November 14th, 1902. And he was on a hunting party with the governor of Mississippi at the time, a guy named Andrew Longino. Now, everyone was shooting bears, but President Roosevelt didn't get one. So the main guide who is the bear hunt guide named Holt Collier tracked down a bear, tied a rope around it, tied it to a tree, brought Mr. Roosevelt to it and said, hey, Teddy Roosevelt, I got a bear, you can shoot it. And Teddy Roosevelt said, that's very unsportsmanlike. I'm not shooting that bear. And people were like, were surprised, but, but he didn't want to shoot the bear because it was unsportsmanlike. And it was so surprising that the word started to spread. And two days later, in the Washington Post, a man named Clifford Berryman actually did a little political cartoon showing Teddy Roosevelt not wanting to shoot the bear. Well, this circulated the country. And a man named Morris Mitchum, up in New York, a few actually blocks away from where the Marcy Projects are in like Bed-Stuy area of Brooklyn. He had a candy shop there and he saw this political cartoon and he went, hmm, it's like candy toy store to his wife, Rose. Rose, we should sew some teddy bears, well, some stuffed bears and put them in the window and call them teddy bears. So they put two of them in the window and it caught on and a few years later, he got, actually got the licensing from Teddy Roosevelt to call his stuffed bears teddy bears. And he made, in 1907, the Ideal Toy Company, which grew to be a massive toy company. My mom always tells me stories when she was a little girl having a doll called the Betsy Wetsy. That was made by the Ideal Toy Company. But it is interesting how, from Teddy Roosevelt not wanting to shoot a bear in Mississippi, to a political cartoon based out of the Washington Post, to a man in Brooklyn that told his wife, let's just sew two plush stuffed bears. And now it's, everyone knows a stuffed bear is a teddy bear. Yeah. And uh, we're going to go inside and see what it's about. So step right up. Let's go for this ride. As we're making an approach, we already have one of my favorite bears, the dancing bears from the Grateful Dead. I wore an appropriate Grateful Dead t-shirt because I like the Grateful Dead. I, I do enjoy good wood cutouts as we're approaching. Oh, next one looks like a little, little elephant. And what's that? I see a tag on its ear that says Stife. Well, that's... That's the other part of this story and has to do about this museum. You see, Steiff is a company in Germany that makes these teddy bears now. Uh, obviously, there was other companies. Steiff was started by Margaret Steiff. And what's funny is she was just a seamstress and she actually made these little stuffed elephants that were being used as pin cushions. But people liked them so much that they started buying them as toys and they started becoming toys. So she started actually in the 1800s, but a little bit later, her nephew was going to school in London and he would draw all different animals and send her drawings. She started sewing different animals because kids started buying these stuffed toys. And his name was Richard and he was like, hey, to his aunt, you know what would be cool? You should make some bears and let me bring them to a local toy fair. And she made some bears. She was a little skeptical at first, but some American businessmen saw them, the teddy bears started blowing up in uh, the US and he ordered 3,000. And that was the big break for Stife that made it a company that we all know today is the teddy bear company. What made the Stife teddy bears different than other teddy bears at that time is Stife bears, you see this bears waving to us, had arms that could move up and down. And another thing they were characterized is having these tags on their ears. So having the uh, movable limbs and tags on the ears made Stife Bears stand out. And you can see Teddy Bear's Stife original since 1905. That's when he brought those first Teddy Bears to the toy fair in Germany. But enough, enough talk, let's, let's get inside. Woodstock, 1969, Yazgis Farm, 51.5 miles. 
Steiff Factory, Germany. 3,920 miles. You'd think it'd be farther. Grace Bears. I don't know what that is. 12 miles and I don't know what Bearsville is. I guess it's town of New York. 18 miles. We were just near Rosendale at a, a trellis. That's another video we did. We'll put a link to that video down below. And Asbury Street, San Francisco. I mean, Grateful Dead. You think of some bears sometimes. I, un I understand it. 2,931 miles. Welcome. Steiff. And they actually sell Steiff here too. Welcome to Marbleton. Steiff Gift Shop and Museum. Enter and bear right. We have coffee shop, a museum, a gift shop, a play area. I'm excited. <laughs> and how long have you guys been here for? We've been here about seven years. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Hi there. Hey now, I love your shirt, man. Thanks. Uh, I'm Joe. Awesome. People know me as Lunchbox. Steve. Nice pleasure. to meet you. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome to our Stife Toy and Collectible Shop. This is where we sell Stife Toys, mm -hmm. like you see right here, soft and plush, and behind you, and limited edition expensive collectibles in the cabinetry. Now my question is, have you ever heard of Stife? Yes. Love that answer. <laughs> Let me tell you what I know about Stife. Stife was founded by a really amazing woman named Margareta Stife in 1880 in Gingen, Germany. She was in a wheelchair with polio ever since she was 18 months old. In her late 30s, she's a seamstress looking for to use extra belt. She stumbles on an elephant pincushion pattern in a magazine which she makes and all the kids want to play with this new toy she came up with. That's the light bulb moment. She gets her brother and five nephews involved, sends them all to college on a different trade for Stife. She becomes one of the world's first female CEOs and nephew Richard creates the world's first five-jointed teddy bear in 1902. She had no kids of her own but she was a mama bear to everyone in the world and she's quoted as saying, for children only the best is good enough. <laughs> and my turn to prove it to you guys so please awesome. come with me. Thank you. So we're going to start right here. And there we have Margareta Steiff in real life. And below her is Teddy Bear Margareta Steiff <laughs> in her wheelchair at her sewing machine. And right next to her is the elephant pincushion pattern she found. That's the one she made. So we can say this is 1880. She just starts selling the pincushions. 22 years later, there's her nephew Richard, the artist and the bear lover of the family. And there he is creating the world's first five-jointed teddy bear, the 55 PB, in 1902. Its head, arms, and legs moved. Now that's in Gingen, Germany. Now we're traveling from Gingen to Mississippi, right over my left shoulder. And we'll be with our president, Teddy Roosevelt, hunting for bears. Boo, we don't like that around here. <laughs> He doesn't get a bear that day, but we'll say his friend comes along with one and he says something like, how can I shoot a baby bear in a leash? Something like that. Anyway, man in Brooklyn sees his cartoon. He asks his wife to make him two stuffed bears for his shop's window and he puts a sign saying Teddy's Bears underneath. And that's how the name Teddy Bear comes about. So if we go back to Germany, we find Richard Steiff. Now, instead of going to the woods and hunting for bears, he would go to the zoo and sketch bears as an artist. And those were his actual sketches in miniature. Oh. And that's what inspired him to make the world's first five-jointed Ted. So he'd go back to his shop and grab his mohair gopher, cut out pieces of it, sew it together by hand and machine, and then stuff with Excelsior wood shavings. I say German kids are pretty tough, right? They can handle the wood. <laughs> 1903, his first and only order, 3,000 go to Baltimore, Maryland. None have ever been found in modern times. Steiff considers it the holy grail of teddy bears, and they would value it at a half a million dollars if he could just find one. He'd be this size, 55 centimeters, with string attaching everything to his torso to give it the five-jointed movement, head, arms, and legs moving. I wish I could show you this bear, but I can't. <laughs> but the next best thing is here, and that is our 1904 rod bear. Oh he is one of the world's first teddy bears ever made. So Richard Steiff went from string to metal rods inside this bear to give it the movement. But he only made this bear for one year. The next year he creates the modern day disc joint in a teddy bear. So it's one year manufacturing only, and I insure him for 20,000 bucks. What I'm gonna have you do, I'm gonna give you this bear in a second, and all you're gonna do is hold it just the way I am, right? You're just gonna hold it just like this, okay. and you're not doing any of that kind of stuff, okay? okay. Great job, let me see. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch our arms, look at that bear right in the eyes. We're going to tilt his head towards us until his butt is sticking up in the air. And when we go back, count to three, we're going to go back the way we came until he's flat on his back, staring directly at the ceiling in one, two, three. 
that's so cute! <laughs> and these are for cold growlers. I've been growling ever since 1908 wow. in the stuff world. Wow. And I'm up to five wildlife experts in this room tell me baby bears sound exactly like this. That's five so plus awesome. a plethora of locals, so I take oh their word God. for it. Okay. 1882, when Stife first started, they started making things like this. They loved animals in motion. This could be the first bear toy they ever made. There you go. Awesome <laughs> spin. This predates a teddy bear by uh, 20 years. Yeah. Two years after that, so many companies are trying to imitate Stife that they need an unmistakable trademark to fend up all the copycatting going on. So, Brian yeah. Stife, when the nephews, comes up with a button in the ear. And ever since then, you're looking for the button or the hole where that button was. These boxes are about replicas, meaning 1980, they're 100 years in. They started looking back at their coolest pieces and recreating them, such as the somersault bear from 1909. Oh, wow. Or when China releases pandas to the Chicago and London and zoos for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. But really brilliant is this. In 1919, right after World War One. So they have no available mohair, so they created their own paper fur. It's paper over cotton. It got them through three years of production until they got mohair back. It's really brilliant. It is. It's so soft, too. Yeah. It's right. crazy. It's also a, <laughs> a squeaker. Bottom two rows are just some classic characters from Stife. Laura the Parrot is from about 1962. Mungo is from about 1957-ish. The um, bears are all replicas, so from the years you see. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, stipe bear on the Titanic. It was a polar bear that survived, actually. That's which is really amazing. Cool. Well, polar but bears that's are not icy water. right. <laughs> I, I know, I know. It's in 1912, right after the Titanic sank, Stipe came out with a black bear with red eyes, named Othello. He was sold exclusively in England. So all these kids who lost grandpa on the Titanic, if they were lucky enough, they got a bear to cheer them up, right? Black bear with red eyes. So I hugged him at a pre-auction. He went for $35,000 at his auction. I saw a woman in Antiques Roadshop find one for $65 at a yard sale, like six months later. So at least one was out there. Yeah. And he's the only... I'm going to hand him to you next. He's the only bear in the world that I know that was made loose-jointed, right? Just to give best hugs. Oh, my gosh. Right. Holy. He really does a great hugger. It does. He's an amazing hugger. <laughs> So just, you know Stipe, so the thing is, you know, let's, we know this is a Stipe, it's 1959, but show me where the button is. So we're doing a little kind of, you know, oh yeah, you got me quick. Like, I wonder if you found something like that, how much less value would yeah. it have without the tag on its ear, if it didn't? Is the tag add the value to something like that? In a perfect world, sure. But if, to me, personally to me, if I knew oh, yeah. it's a Stipe, yeah. I see the hole, right? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where no, it's I know. supposed to be. Yeah, in a perfect world, do you want all the bells and whistles? Though, so yes. Do you want the tag? Do you want the thing? Yeah. Do you want the... He's got everything, right? He's got his original. He's got his <laughs> chest tag. He's got his flap here, the button. A great display right here is this one, made by my friend Laura Shelley. So much going on. Squirrel's painting the dog. The mouse is doing the cat statue. The deer are going to eat the flowers. <laughs> Bully's just checking himself out. Bunny's got a lot of art to hang. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paintings. Uh, I love the bird just swagging out <laughs> by his painting. <laughs> like, that's me. <laughs> and giraffe teaching in art class. Um, she's local, and you can actually commission her to paint you and your favorite stipe if you ever wanted. Oh, that's incredible. That cool. What was her name again? Laura Shelley. Laura Shelley. Now, the girl next to her is my friend Sandy. And Sandy is, um, Sandy is about four in that picture. It was painted by her mom. I'm going to say she's 70 right now. She still comes in with that leopard in her hand. His name is Baby. And she donated these big pieces from F.A.O. Schwartz here. Mm -hmm. 1950. They're incredible. I know. I love the eyes on them. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, beautiful green eyes. Yeah. I love when you see how the nose was just the string layered. Right, hand strong. Yeah. So, pretty Im impressive. She still has, you know, the button, mm -hmm. tag, mm -hmm. chest tag. I mean, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. There's a sticker camera in there. Oh, yeah, we got everyone in here. Everyone's in there.
That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend Nancy Ostrowski is a local artist around here, totally an artist artist. Anyway, she has synesthesia, so she hears color. So she paints jazz musicians live in front of an audience, the colors she's hearing them play. It's really... Anyway, um, so when she said I want to do a circus piece, she jazzed it out. That's the oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like That's I need to explain that. Like, why is it no, it's band? beautiful. No, it is. And the trapeze guy, he's just... Everyone's going to catch him, I think. <laughs> 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 this little like guy with the oversized overalls is my favorite, though. Yeah. Little hardened playing card. Oh right, he's supposed oh. to be like that, like hobo clown, clown kind yeah. of thing, right? Before I show you the rest of the museum, you guys need to go up these steps and take a look around. Hello. All these beautiful woodblock toys from Germany. And then one of my mom's favorite, the Madame Alexander collections. It always fascinates me, the ones that are made for special occasions like the coronation of Queen Mother, coronation of Queen Elizabeth, crown and glory. <clears throat> I like this goddess of the silver screen, Dolores Costello, AKA Drew Barrymore's grandmother. I like the way that he has this whole setup too. So we obviously have all of the Wizard of Oz, Madame Alexander's here, but using those German blocks to form the rainbow because somewhere over the rainbow. Joy, they welcome you too. The Danelle of Marbleton. Born on March 9th, 1895 in New York, Beatrice Alexander's father owned the first American doll hospital. She later set out with $1,600 loan to start her own company and rose from home beginnings to be the woman responsible for many firsts in the toy industry, from the use of plastic and dolls making to designing famous figures. And there is Madame Alexander's Madame Alexander. We have Madame Alexander from all around the world. I like these Egypt ones. Yukon. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Hi, I'm John F. Kennedy. And if you know what's smart, you should subscribe to Joe and Joy Have Landed. Make sure you like this video and comment down below. It's the American thing to do. And we have more Stife Teddy Bears. This collection is so amazing, so beautiful. Vampire <gasps> one. That is amazing. I can't see if they're camping like Robin Hood. I've never seen this. These Revel cars, I have a bunch of those from when I was a kid at home. i never seen Stife with them. We have the cop. And the fireman. He looks like what I feel a teddy bear looks like. The different fruity ones. Oh my god. We have a strawberry, a pear, and orange cherries. There's more over there. Even a stife nativity. The pumpkin. You want a stife pumpkin bear? That door's private, but this door says, please open me. Oh. I love using like the old closet, almost making like a teddy bear dollhouse. <laughs> I love these ones playing with some toys down here, from plastic dinosaurs to cars. See, there's the little girl, and there it is. 
Now this will restore some pieces of the collection. And if you look over here, there is my daughter's grandma Grace when she's two. We call her Grace Bear now. She's 85. Oh, wow. And that's her eBay handle we call her by. <laughs> and there's no stopping her from collecting. So she basically gave us everything from the museum and is still collecting stuff for us from the museum, whether we want her or not. <laughs> and she loves hippos and rhinos and hedgehogs. Certain pieces are exclusive to certain countries. Like these would be exclusive to Germany, obviously. I noticed the Holland one. Yeah. Holland. Upstairs, yep. Romeo and Juliet. Only sold in England. Yeah. Harrods of Knightsbridge. I just absolutely love. I love everything about that. The box, the clothing, the bears. Austria. These were exclusive just to Austria. I never seen the Sea Life ones. This one is, I, I just fell for this one. She even got a... Oh no! Oh pearl. my god! <laughs> That's incredible. That is so cool. Borowski crystal bears. <clears throat> Here is, actually let me get a better one. The blue's got a nicer necklace. Silk. Alpaca. Wow, I didn't wow. see this star. And then, you know the mohair is just pretty rocking. It's got a great incredible. Yeah. And the mohair growls. <laughs> now we have um, and two more rooms to show you guys. And if you had little ones with you. These are where we want to go. <laughs> and you can eat in these rooms too when um, you're here playing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So this is the Mama Bear Lounge where Mama Bears can come and just hang and watch the little ones play. This little fawn right here is definitely a highlight to me in this room. Oh wow. Such a sweet little guy. Raining cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I see the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. <laughs> and if you guys go in the back room, you'll meet Huggy Bear. Big cup. Oh, I see why he's called Huggy Bear. Oh, wow. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> the hug. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, these dioramas I love. Dinosaurs coming, it's fresh baked goods, sharing them with the bears. That's like boxes and jelly. It is, they do look like some sea serpents in there. Yeah, definitely see if you had some kids. Cool little, like, it's like, almost like a bunk bed situation with some teddy bears. I like this bear cave, Joy. This is so cute. Okay, so real quick, this is our house here. And uh, six generations of the same family live in this house. I know three generations. My friend Rod, a retired teacher, his kids, and his grandkids. So his son one day came up to me and said, Steve, I really think that's my great-grandfather Bastin. And I looked at him like, Ryan, it's not. And how do I know, right? I didn't grow up around here. I lived in the city my adult life, blah, blah, blah. Because all Bastons bend. They literally, their knees bend, their elbows bend. This is exactly how my friend Rod stands. He literally stands exactly like that. Yeah. His other grandfather, Solomon Davenport, stands incredibly straight and proud, just like his daughter and two sons. It's night and day, their knees are locked, their arms are to the side. So we think it's about 1865 after church, all the kids are in their Sunday best. He sh takes off his hat to show off his mohawk kid holding the dog. Ah. <laughs> ah. It is so there. Do you guys believe in the ghost, do you think at all? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I'm a skeptic, but I don't want to ever put anything out of yeah. the, uh, okay. the realms. Okay, fair enough. And believe what you will, right? Yeah. Exactly. I claim that she's my roommate, Florence. Okay. Okay. And little Florence. They both died in the house of TB. Um, I heard male voices once. I don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. But with Florence, 
Before I moved into this house, I went up to my, my current bedroom mm -hmm. to play guitar and sing. I sat down, went to strum, and as soon as I did, my head turned so fast to the doorway, I knew I was playing to a woman. Mm -hmm. I was 95% sure I was playing to her until I found out she died in the house after the fact. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Fun one was I was staring in my bedroom mirror, like we all do, right? And it felt like a woman came up right behind me and I heard a laugh and I heard you were so vain. <laughs> and then I heard a laugh again. <laughs> And uh, at first I was like, oh my God, did I just really hear that? Second I was like, did I just get this <laughs> <laughs> By a ghost? <laughs> but um, I, it felt accepting, right? It felt like, it honestly felt like a good girlfriend. Was good. Yeah. Right? Uh, they were going to sell the house to someone prior to me, and that person wanted to do so much work to the house that they were just like, no way. Yeah. No, no. As they were explaining to them, they're like, they're inside their heads, they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, they're really happy, and the family still comes in visits. You get to take one of like these guys down with you. Oh no, that's yeah. so cute. <laughs> I know. So cute for a teddy bear picnic by the water. I know. That's so cute. Oh wow. Right, I mean he's really cool. Mm -hmm. oh, this little, this oh, there's another like cutie octopus. Yeah. yeah. So they started going that direction actually, which is pretty cool. I'm glad they did and incorporated the. Uh, Sea life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you have it. The Den of Marbleton. The Teddy Bear Museum. We left with some new friends. Joy got a little elephant. And she got me a little bear because I like the bears. Mm -hmm. And they do have the cafe. So fresh lemonade. And Joy got some... Jane Clear special. Yeah. Which okay. was... Green tea, vanilla syrup, and strawberry popping bubbles. Yeah. Whoa. This spot was amazing. The couple running was awesome. The guy mm -hmm. gave us the tour of the owner of it. Loved In it. Incredible. Um, we did not know what to expect. We didn't know how big it was or small it was. It was incredible. The guy had so much knowledge and the collection is massive. Seriously. Like, yeah. I like teddy bears and he had all the stuff. stuff. Oh, yeah. I would, I would say this is awesome. It makes me want to hunt stuff now. Like, yeah, we I were saw a serpent. Stuff. I saw the, what was it, the oyster. <laughs> that salamander, um, the oyster. I have to find the fruities now. Yeah. No, no, it was, it was pretty cool. I learned a lot here too, which is what I like. Yes. So uh, I think we could call it though. The Den of Marbleton Teddy Bear Museum. Been there, done, done that. that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eat. And live life. Hey guys, ready for an adventure? And we're off. <laughs>